guys, my name is Amy Cho. I'm a golf professional. Today, we have a swing analysis. A male golfer sent me his driver swings and he's having issues. Actually, these are a lot of things that many of you already ask. So I'm assuming a lot of you guys are actually going to enjoy watching this lesson. So let's go ahead and get started. If you are new to my channel, please hit the subscribe button. And if you enjoy the video, please press the like button and share it with all your friends. It's going to help me promote my channel. That way I can bring you guys even more great golf content on YouTube. Okay, so let's take a look at John's swing. He said he's a six handicapper, used to be a two, but now he's a six and his misses are usually left sometimes right. And his, the issues he's having is that his takeaway goes inside and then on the way down, he feels like his trail hip feels like it's spinning out too much, not able to hang back. Um, and then he also mentioned that he's a great iron player. Um, so when someone says that they're a great iron player, but not so much with the driver, immediately I can tell that they're probably really good at shifting through and compressing that golf ball. So I'm assuming John is really good at doing that with his irons and hoping he doesn't do the same thing for the driver. <laughs> so I'm going to actually touch on both the inside takeaway and the right trail hip being too flimsy, okay? So if you look at John swing from the down the line, the first thing I notice is his toe lines. Toe lines actually align way to the right. 99% uh, of the time, this actually really forces you to take it back on the same inside path this way. And as you can see, because of the under the plane backswing takeaway at the top, the club is crossing over ever so slightly. That's going to cause a lot of issues on the way down. And if you look at it from the face on view, you can clearly even from this angle, see that the trail foot is back and he's starting the backswing inside. But one more thing here, notice how high the left shoulder is in the backswing. So he's basically going this way. And then from this position, his head and shoulder moved a lot. From this position, it's really hard to get back to the golf ball. So the normal pattern here is to go over the top. Boom, this way. And then the trail hip will be look and feel flimsy from that motion. But obviously John is a great player. He's a six handicapper. So he actually gets here and then he goes boom, right on line on the way down, which is excellent. Uh, but if we look at his swing from the face on again, let's look at his hips on the way down now, see if he shifts a lot. So let's draw lines on either side of his thighs. And if you look, he does have a lot of lateral move right there, right? And then if, actually, let's just take a look from the side again. From the side, let's draw a line behind his hips, uh, making a wall there. He actually moves forward as well. So he has a lot of motion in his hips. He's going laterally and forward. So we're gonna really have to post that trail foot down. That way he can hang back and go up low into the golf ball. It may not seem that big of a deal, but the toe line, the incorrect toe line is actually causing a lot of problems in his swing. None of the tour players ever really have their feet close to hit it long and straight. They usually are either square or slightly open. Take uh, Justin Thomas for an example. I do use him a lot in my examples just because when he was a junior golfer, he was actually a very short hitter. He worked his way up now he's an amazingly long uh, driving professional on tour and we can learn a lot from this process. If, if you are a long hitter all, you, all your life, that's great, but we would learn so much more from someone who went from sh hitting it short and making him into a long hitter, right? So when Justin Thomas was a junior golfer, obviously I heard he was very light, very tiny, scrunny, and he, um, him and his father used to really work on lengthening his driver distance. And one of the things they worked on was the angle of attack into the golf ball. So at the time, a lot of tour players were going about minus one into the golf ball, but they really wanted to make sure it was in a ascending angle, plus four, plus five, into the golf ball. So what they did was they moved the golf ball up in his stance that allowed him to really hit up on the golf ball. So that way he was able to carry it higher, farther, and it rolled out more since they took out a lot of the backspin on the golf ball. So in this article, they mentioned the moving up the golf ball in the stance actually makes your whole alignment slightly open. 
and that tends to help a lot of the tour players hit it far. So um, that was very interesting. And then another thing with Freddie Couples, he's always been slightly open with his uh, toe alignment, but he's always been a long hitter. So tour players tend to be either square or opened. With a lot of amateur golfers, a lot we can see this a lot. This is unusual to pull that foot back. And most common reason for this is because a lot of uh, amateurs tend to early extend, thrusting that hip forward. If you start with the square feet or slightly open feet and you thrust your hips forward, now you have no room here and you will completely miss this shot. So because of that, a lot of people tend to create fake room here, pull that trail foot back and then create some kind of room. But actually it hurts you more in the wrong, long run because when the trail foot is back, now in this position, your trail hip is out of sync compared to the rest of the body. So now you have to catch up and go boom, thrust forward even more. So we do not want to see those toes closed. We're going to work on three things for John. Toe alignment, taking it back online, and hanging back in the trail foot uh, so that way he can hit up on it. So these are some major changes here, but I'm, you know, today I'm going to make it easy for you, amify the whole situation, meaning making it simple, fun, and effective and I'm gonna help you fix all three. All right, so these are uh, a lot of uh, complicated movements, so I really want you to do these at home in front of the mirror. And um, what we're going to do is we're gonna exaggerate and open your toes a lot, and then we're going to get that club traveling straight back by making that left shoulder travel low. It's going to feel like your hands and the club is way in front of you, but it's actually going to be online because he was like this, right? So left shoulder low. And then you're going to get into the post impact area. You're gonna put about 70% pressure in the back foot. So three things, open toes, shoulder low, pressure in the back foot until post impact. Once you get used to this movement at home without the club, boom, you can go ahead and go out on the driving range and try it with a 50% power like this. Open toes, shoulder low, hang back. Once you get comfortable with it over the golf ball, let's go ahead and hit it hard. Three things, open toes, left shoulder low, hang back. I'm sure a lot of you guys were curious on some of these taking it back inside and moving the hips too early in the downswing. I hope this actually helped you understand the concept more and try the drill. Let me know how it goes and I'll see you guys in the next lesson.